mic on, mic off. Mic on. What you came for, blood on the game bow. Everybody drop it like rainfall. Uh, this is your moment, eyes on a puppet. Can't think, church just open. And you're singing your praises, la la la. Screaming your name, la 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 la. One more step, you're immortal now. Cause once you play God, once you play God.
All right. Looks like we're live. It's October 13th here in Chicago, 6 p.m. Central here. My name is Elvin Moy, also known as Epoxy. We're going to be casting Illinois Tech Scarlet Hawks as they go on to essentially week two of their collegiate fall preseason. Last weekend, we saw the Hawks take a pretty sound 1-0 victory against uh, their previous opponent and a forfeit win against uh, U.S. Air Force. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to remember who was the exact opponent they played uh, on uh, Boston University, that's right, BU. So uh, we'll do a quick check of the roster. Teams are getting set up in the picks bands and everything. Um, but we'll go to them in one moment. First, a quick check of the roster. Alright. The only type varsity you've got Cheng Long, Oscar, Weak Side Enjoyer Wu, Weak Rama, Teddy, Ramasami, Lord Hana in the jungle, Jacob Ryu is bowed in the mid lane, Jack, Yuri Ha in the bottom, and He Moon, Black, Blank, Yang. Led by their staff. The Swire Turtle and Pirate. Oscar is a second year studying computer science on his master's degree, peaking at Masters in uh, the current season from Spain. Fun fact about him level 1 coin flipper, inter, and EU washed player. For Teddy Ramasami in the jungle, second year studying computer user science, peaking at Emerald 2 from Indonesia and can play guitar. Jacob Bode Ryus studying AI. In his third year, peaking at Emerald 3 from North Carolina. Jack Zuriha, studying computer science in his third year. A grad peaking uh, with GM and from Vietnam. And then last, we've got Black Blank, studying electrical engineering from South Korea, peaking at Emerald 3. And has been playing this game for almost 10 years. So, a lot of... A uh, lot of computer engineering and computer science, uh, excuse me, computer science degrees, but we'll have to see uh, here for the Seelaw fall warm-up how these players are going to uh, hold up against some new opponents uh, in terms of the format. Uh, players have been placed in a round-robin pool where they're playing these best of ones, and uh, at the conclusion of that, I think probably at the top one or two uh, move on into a bracket style, so... It's a good start for the Hawks with a 2-0 lead. Hopefully they can keep up that momentum here with WPI, but taking a look at Worcester, Worcester Polytechnic Institute Black, you've got Drain Soldier, Zaza Zulu, Soap, Sugi, Tico, and Kasesha. Uh, definitely a you're already seeing, you know, some pretty far ranked disparities. You've got some iron and silver accounts, and then their uh, kind of their top player right now looks like to be a uh, plat one jungler. So let's uh, jump into the kind of pick band screen, see players as they continue to go through their pick and band selects. IIT going to be taking the blue side here for this game. As they have t taken out the Zyra support, J4 and Udyr jungle. So again, we were talking about their uh, WPI's jungler. Definitely going to be a focus target for sure. But uh, WPI bans will be for the first round, Kaiser, Yone, and Talia. And IIT will pick out all of their laners to start off with, with Jinx, Bot, Poppy Top, and Azir mid. WPI though getting their jungler something before the IIT bans too many too many uh, junglers out with the Zap jungle, and you've got looking like MF so MF bot, and that could be an Annie support or an Annie mid lane, but uh, looking at Kesha's of their supports player pool, it does, I don't see a lot of Annie games mostly Zyro, Lulu. Seraphine, so likely going to be an Annie mid there that we'll see. Sometimes, uh, you know, back to the basics, to the point click, there's there's some merit in that. So, uh, 
and he provides that for sure against Azir you know you have to pretty much the only way to surprise an Azir against as an anti player is, is is flashing for play and trying to get a stun off um, his mobility with his E to shuffle himself out uh, will make it definitely hard in terms of a 1v1 situation but if uh, Zach decides to you know help out a lot could be could be a problem for Azir for sure a lot of CC follow up there uh, especially now that WPI has picked the Seraphine that ult also providing a strong form of CC for for them um, but IIT remains to pick out their jungler and support so WPI has removed Rel and Olaf uh, meanwhile IIT is gonna focus with the new Jax uh, visual update with the Jax ban and the uh, Lux uh, support I have to assume but uh, Seraphine already being picked out meaning that all WPI has left is their top laner um, IIT wanted to go for some style points. They seem pretty confident in these picks, so that's where we see Zuri uh, picking up the Yasuo top there for for Oscar, and a uh, little bit of CC and tankiness there to round it out with Black Blank picking up the Braum. So passive is great, you know, uh, for the CC. Potential level one invades too to that to that point, um, but. Last pick for WPI will be the Darius top lane, which is, I think, Yasuo has actually faced that matchup before uh, in a previous game. I'd, I'd have to look at the match history to be 100% sure, but uh, either way, you know, this is definitely a game in terms of rank disparity, IIT in favor in that case, but things can always happen. Could be all Smurfs, you never know. Sometimes if you need to sand back the competition a little bit, but I'd like to think that these college students are, you know, ethical players and, and actually putting their real ranks forward. So we've got 10 seconds until we hit 10 free minutes back take delay, so we'll go on a quick break. But when we come back, it'll be WPI versus Illinois Tech Esports.
Alrighty, welcome back. Just a few seconds from loading up onto the rift before we head over to Summoner's Rift. For those just tuning in, again, my name is Epoxy. Helping out the Illinois Tech Hawks cast their third match of the fall 2023 season. As uh, Illinois Tech making a strong showing last weekend with their 1-0 victory against BU, Boston University, and a forfeit win from the U.S. Air Force Academy. Looking at that loading screen, we've got the players lined up there. We've got weak side enjoyer from IIT on the Yasuo top lane. The IIT will be blue here. Rabasami on the poppy. Ryu's playing a zero mid, Zuri so Hachang spot. Black blank on the Braum support. Meanwhile, for WPI black, you've got Drain Soldier on the Darius, Zazazulu on the Zag, Soap Sugi on the Annie, Tico on Misfortune, and I'm just going to assume that's Kesha, uh, not Kasessa. Probably just an in-game name uh, availability playing that fairy court seraphine. Doing a quick check on the masteries. You know, you got to. You've got <laughs> level 7 there on that Azir with 184 points. Looking like he's the highest one as of right now. Right behind with Zuri had 142. Seraphine's got some level 7 there and... No clue about if uh, these masteries are locked because they just are relatively new accounts or not. I'd like to assume so. Some facts, though, about WPI, so they're all the way in Massachusetts. Oh, no. Unable to download spectator data, the game will now exit. All right, we've got a problem. Uh, let's see if I can reconnect, hopefully. If not, we're going to be in a slight pickle, and I apologize for the technical difficulty. But hoping I can still make it onto the rift to watch these players as they've... I know there was a pretty big update on Wednesday, but I'm not sure that's what's leading to the uh, issues with the with the stream. All right, Oof, we made it. All right, I was getting worried for a moment there if we were even going to be able to connect onto the rift. Oh, that would explain it. So it looks like we couldn't even connect because you had a couple players have to instantly put on the pause. So um, while we're waiting for that, we can take a quick glance at a couple of summoners. You've got Oscar, again, IIT playing here onto the blue side. It's going to be TP for the Yasuo, TP for the Azir. Uh, Ghost for the Jinx, and Ignite for Braum. Uh, meanwhile, top lane, you've got Flash Ghost for Darius. TP there for the Annie. Um, 
So in terms of 1v1 capacity, technically Darius has a better summoners with the Ghost. But then again, uh, Yasuo already, you know, with the E dash provides a lot of movement capa uh, capability for himself. Uh, to just get in and out of those tricky situations, though, for sure. In terms of clear speed, Zach, I think, wins just by a, by an eek. Both Poppy and... Uh... Oh, my lordy. A lot of, a lot of self-pings there from these guys. These guys are very passionate about letting their players know who's who's alive. And for those that are new to that experience, uh, the recent patches as of late have made it so that if you try to ping your opponents or your allies uh summoners death timer alive status uh you will not see it unless you are in a pre-made group such as these five are right now and uh zaza zulu there will be covering his top side is going to be spotted out by that ward that's been placed down by by the poppy but uh, in terms of clear speed, like I was saying, you know, Poppy and Zach, they're not known for insanely fast, uh, jungle clear s speeds. What they're, what they mainly provide for those kind of is the team fighting CC capability. Um, Poppy with her W dash counter, uh, a big ult to displace members that are, you know, right before to group up with a big objective or anything of the like. And, uh. Zach, you know, with his ult, with his E, if you're kind of caught unawares with limited vision, could always be a, a big problem for sure. So, a couple autos there for, for both junglers as they do a pretty traditional, uh, pretty traditional start. Weak side enjoyer already. Pouring uh, some slight pressure with the, with his Qs. And... After these two, minion, two minions should be hitting level 2, I'm actually kind of interested to see what will happen with that if he wants to go for kind of for an early engage. Level 2 will be hit. A couple of autos traded here already between these guys. A lot of autos traded. Weak side enjoyer going all the way. Forced into flash out from Drain Soldier. And now here coming the Hawks for their level 2 engage. Kesha taking a Braum Q, but won't have any additional follow up from the Jinx. So, Oscar already putting on a uh, masterclass for us here with the uh, Yasuo pressure. Uh, Ryu's and Annie, pretty even on the CS right now, but Azir is starting to make a slight push here towards the mid lane, which he will be facing actually to Zach as he's finishing off those Raptors. But uh, a couple more engages. Zuriha taking a decent chunk of damage, I think caught up during the entire duration of the MF bullet uh, E. And... A lot of damage being taken by Soap Sugi as well, so Soap in a tight spot might have to get out of this wave actually. And looks like Azir already establishing a decent amount of lane dominance. Drain Soldier missing his grab. Couple autos tried there for Weak Sign Jordan, not able to get much more. Soap Sugi actually going in and staying, and that's going to be the first blood already there for the Hawks at. Three and a half minutes in so like we said you know this is a pretty far ranked disparity I, i'm expecting to see a lot of just solo lane kills likely um but it's ho hopefully you know these guys uh wpi is able to just you know not bleed out too much maybe maybe set out some hope for like some big team 5v5 games but uh with you know, the seniority of the Hawks and, and how practiced that they are uh, might not be the case. So Annie, after that death, actually going to elect to walk all the way back to her lane. Uh, meanwhile, Daria is going for a quick recall to grab himself that lost chapter. Quick engage actually being started up right now. Zuriha in a very difficult spot. Flash Ignite actually being used. Zuriha, I think, will just live it. Uh, 40 HP being reached. That's going to be Tico actually dying in the process. And hold on here. So WPI's bot lane showing signs of life here to rally back the... Uh, I don't know what their logo is. Maybe Bulls or something? I, uh, but way to go there for Tico and Kesha. I think um, maybe just IIT being too greedy. Uh, not really respecting their lane opponents. But, you know, Seraphine 
MF there. There, there was kind of. Oh, that's an unfortunate cat admin. Can you, like, <laughs> cat admin lost and Ryu's just not like that. Uh, but as I was saying, you know, with the Seraphine MF matchup, that's that's pretty much just all like your ability spam, right? Just to chunk those guys out. I think when we saw uh, that engage by that by the time it finished, like those guys were practically oom. Another set of uh, summoners being exchanged there, and Azir continuing to push up his lead as he's already gotten two kills above to Annie. Weak side enjoyer and Drain Soldier going for a couple of engages here. Weak side is facing a battalion of five or six caster minions as he's going in for that. He's going to try to see what he can get more of. He does have the double dagger, uh, so does have a little bit more in terms of the autos. So Drain Soldier trying to trying to really be aggressive in this 1v1 um, and weak side enjoyer wants to try his hand for it as level 6 here being reached by both of these guys is gonna go for it taking a decent amount of damage but you do have the uh, double health potions uh, for the refillables there for Darius so both guys still pretty even on uh, on the health pool but you know it's those kind of small little bits of health that are really going to make or break, you know, that separate the rank disparity, like who's willing to kind of commit for that all in. So, unfortunately, not having the best of days here with this Azir matchup. So, I think the logic here with WPI with that pick is like, hey, okay, this uh, Ryu's guy is definitely like way beyond our capability to deal with. What is like a useful mid laner that can still have an impact no matter no matter what, just because of her kit. Annie with the point clicks done definitely provides that if you know WPI is able to follow up with like a you know an MF ultimate right under that a Seraphine ultimate right under that you could definitely still make a big impact as an Annie player even when you're significantly behind. This looks like Yastro is going to be the first one to tap out actually first before we talk about the top lane. A lot of rotation here between these guys as Poppy's coming here all the way around. Ramasami as well, level 5. It's going to be Azir hidden in here. He's going to actually be caught in a very kind of precarious position, but he's going to be taking tons of damage. Kesha, one auto will do it. He is going to have a soldier to get him out of there. Huge follow-up instantly there from IIT as Ramasami running for his life as he's uh, being chased around by a big bear, I believe. Yeah, I thought for a second that was Ivern's Daisy, <laughs> but no, uh, it's just a uh, big squishy piece of uh, jello. The uh, top lane matchup I was saying though, the Darius had actually elected to be the first one to back, but you can see that kind of uh, CS lead just continue to creep up there for IIT solo lanes. So they're trying to uh, push the advantage here as much as they can. And again, you know, Zach doesn't provide too much of that damage here. Weak side enjoyer. Going in for another bit of engage here. Drain Soldier actually trying to see how far he can push the envelope. He does still have his refillable potions, though, to keep in mind that. So he will have the Ninja Tabbies. That's going to provide him a little bit of uh, damage reduction. TP here now finally being used by Soap here for the first time. But uh, she is a little over 30 CS behind. In the meantime, though, after that skirmish there in the bot lane, IIT went to secure themselves the Infernal Drake. And as we can see, the, these Drakes now reflect the new uh, the new stats. So part of Riot with their recent patch. We'll jump into that in one second. But I'm sorry, going in, forcing Drain Soldier to flash out, he actually didn't want to risk any amount of CC. I think actually if... I'm not certain if uh, Poppy Ease, if that allows a Yasuo to ult. I, I don't think so. You have to... You have to have something on the Z axis in order to be able to to actually get to ultimate. So only Poppy's um, ultimate can actually provide that, I believe. Uh, sorry. So anyway, as I was saying about the dragons, though, so these new uh, with the new patch, these dragons actually uh, have a little bit of different stats than they did at the beginning of the season. I think previously Infernal used to have five percent, uh, but now three percent makes it that. Uh, you know, they're not. It's supposed to essentially make it not so snowbally for a team in the early game, just because you got one or two dragons. So, uh, I guess good in a sense for WPI, right? That they're not as impactful. But Zazuzulu not going to land a Q onto uh, the Yasuo and Sofsugi. One more auto, I think, will actually do it. But she is 
very very close to dying she does reused with no flash available gonna try to so he wants to put everything on it and will Sharima shuffle himself out forcing out all of those uh, abilities but it won't be enough and in that process do a quick rewind uh, YouTube rewind moment nice double knock up there from black blank and huge amount of damage there with the follow-up three man here top going all the way here to help his, his members Jinx rocket won't even be there to assist and Zuriha lets us know that he's displeased with that result as he now has to 1v2 his lane and allows MF to continue to build up her lead so even with that kill though MF here has got a 20 CS deficit though so it's not necessarily like super set in stone right for uh who's uh, on top at the moment uh for the bot lane but the brom roam allowed iit to secure the double kill push uh continue to push that yasuo with a bit of a shutdown gold down for both iit's mid and top lanes it'll actually be reused already finishing the leandry so that burn damage is not necessarily attractive because you're gonna constantly be taking autos uh i guess if you think about it uh from the tower if the annie's under there but ravasami wants to continue to push uh and uh places the herald there down for mid allows ryu's to capture all of those plates and look at a potential first tower in like under 12 13 minutes practically so We'll have to see how much longer Annie can hold out, but it, it's not look like it's going to as Ryuze instantly follows up with his uh, turret passive. And IIT already 11 minutes in with a sizable gold lead here. A couple autos being traded. Black Blank wants to see if he can have any assistance in following up, but he's actually going to get all of his autos in there. Huge amount of bullet time, but it actually won't land that CC. Rocket will not be enough to do it. Zach going to W all the way in. A decent amount of damage at the Black Blank, but it's only Zach alive right now. I think he will not actually have his passive yet. And he's taking a lot of minion damage. Zuriha could get very excited if she's able to get the kill. Won't be able to get it. Zaza Zulu will not be able to get that. But Zuriha wants to follow up for more. Forces WPI at the back there. Kesha and Tiko will have to, unfortunately accept that loss as they were not able to land that ultimate combo uh onto zuriha during that engage during that skirmish meanwhile ramasami gonna take the time to start his way through that uh ocean dragon as uh he'll have some assistance from iit's bot lane shortly as a second turret now has fallen in IIT's favor with Jinx securing a bot, so we'll likely see some rotations happen likely in the near future. Um, this early on though, Soapsugi continuing to struggle unfortunately as Azir has now pushed the tier 2 mid to already under 600 health. So, as the gap continues to increase here in the Hawk's favor, you know, taking a look at the uh, gold differentials you've got. 600 gold lead there for Jinx to be able to get herself to Kraken, though MF does have her Yomu as she's essentially the one that has the most gold here for her WPI team. Meanwhile, Annie, definitely one uh, going to be backseating, unfortunately, this game. But uh, leads pretty much on every lane for every player right now for IIT. We talked about the rotations. We see Ryu's coming down here. He does still have a uh, a turret here to deal with. I apologize. I thought is that a visual bug? No, it's the two turrets uh, mid lane. I apologize. The bot still open. IIT though has four members here to help secure it. Ryu's has a decent amount of damage, but I think there's still a little bit too much there for that turret. It's gonna hold for another wave or so, but. Engage here from weak side as he's trying to put in a master class here Will not be able to land that tornado But it won't be a problem. It's going to be drain soldier using all of his sums just to get out of that situation and Zaza Zulu Losing his jungle in the process will not be able to secure that and it's going to be a bloodbath actually landing himself right onto the traps Could Zuriha get the kill? It will be I Couldn't tell in that process actually 
flash point click there, as we mentioned, for Sosuki. She is able to get some follow-up, though, onto the Poppy. But unfortunately, with an 0-0 and 6 Poppy, they're not going to yield too much gold there. Black Blank coming here now around. He's going to use the move E for a little bit of movement speed. Is going to be able to just land the kill onto that. And forcing Zuriha to go in for the engage with his Ghost. Has a lot of follow-up damage. Qs, 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 and double kill there for the Jinx. Slim margins for the Hawks that they're willing to play around, but Braum's confident with his Demurt Shreds and Life Well Pendant to have that MR to keep himself alive. If, you know, this was an Annie with a, uh, like a Ludens or something, it might be a different story, but unfortunately she is so behind in terms of the gold, literally double that of uh, Azir, that unfortunately just won't have the damage follow up but she did have enough to use the point click stun for the brom to get a kill for him so uh, uh excuse me for the poppy not for the brom so with that in mind though last tier one here to fall Ryu's will continue to push that gold lead even higher now with another turret being removed with him in there with now a practically 5k gold lead on on him and WPI looking like they're sending a couple members here top to try to see if they can face him off. Ryu's actually will have the Banshees actually in fact to try to get him to have a bit of a spell shield there to keep himself uh, from getting any kind of weird CCs and that's likely in regard for the Annie. So they're trying to see IIT aggressively making their way through here to try to push. Black Blank will actually miss that completely. Uh, but it is doesn't look like it'll matter. Tico running out for his life. He's gonna escape with a margin of health at like 100. But Zazu Zulu will fall in the process as his noble sacrifice, and Poppy with the instant E follow up to stop that MF channel uh, will mean that it could be a inhib turret that they're setting their sights on. But I take that back. It looks like Zuriha and Ramasami want to get themselves that second Rift Herald pretty early. Leave Black Blank and Ryu's there by themselves and let Yasuo clear out Zack's blue jungle. And at this point, you've got another Cloud Dragon spawning here in 40 seconds. Uh, it will be the Poppy that has the uh, Herald, so she's going to go for her back, pick up a uh, couple control wards, she's finished off her Sunfire, so she does have the, uh, should be pretty tanky, and likely they'll be looking at placing that Herald, maybe bot, uh, to pro pro provide some pressure, maybe let Yasuo continue to split push, and uh, go for an early dragon perhaps. And Azir, with the TP on his arsenal, still is going to push the top lane there to his advantage and might actually run into the Annie. She should be seen by a ward, but he's going to run all the way in. But it won't even matter. Hold on here. You've got a TP there, and that's that's a uh, questionable play there for sure. But uh, I think she's just not having a, d a good day today, unfortunately. And WPI wants to respond there, sending three members actually, in fact two there but won't see too much more action as Azir has already placed a turret there uh, onto the tier one location but three members there needed to hold the Azir to try to see if they can stop them from that turret and meanwhile Poppy's just going to use all of that time as she's been going at it for like the past half minute just soloing this cloud dragon to put it to three dragons there to IIT's name and you've got huge amounts of uh, bounty gold there available for WPI but unfortunately I, I don't think there's really any situation that I can see them grabbing anything like that unless they kind of commit for like a five-man surprise play onto one of the solo members pushing but again you're just going to lose so many resources it's going to be Zazazulu still trying to help out still three members here top actually and Darius now being sent as well to support meanwhile Zuriha pushing in this mid lane on her own and actually going to so Yasuo in that process soloing to Annie as well so it is a nightmare there for WPI as they are just getting completely 
shown up on on their all sides as we now approach almost minute 20 with a 14k goalie commit here from Zazuzulu. flash is being used but Braum is available there for a bit of a knockup it will be the bullet time there uh doing a decent amount of damage black blank though is struggling to keep himself alive big follow-up from the drain soldier with the two ultimates can he look for more though it will actually be enough lifesteal to keep himself alive and Reuse and weak side enjoyer, two strong players of IIT are coming in late to the fight actually though, to actually provide a uh, good amount of shutdown gold there I believe for the Jinx, uh, from the Jinx, uh, so that's going to be enough for Darius to go back at himself, a stride breaker looking like to start to build the dead mans which is a little bit of armor and since you weren't getting you know slaughtered by the azir earlier there with the amount of ap that he has i guess that's almost kind of the smart decision to play at this point in terms of build uh certainly it would be enough to maybe keep himself alive a little bit longer against the uh the yasuo though so IIT's mid and top though still trying to fight for the perfect KDA but Zazuzulu wants to go for another commit here nice amount of CC there it is going to force the stopwatch here can Ryuz go for more he is going to go for the flash one more auto could be enough to do it Zazuzulu will fall in the process but that is going to now be a 700 bonus gold there for the MF uh, that she very much needed uh meaning that Yasuo is the last hope there for IIT to come out of this game with the perfect KDA but uh, a couple of small missteps here from IIT, you know, I don't think it's going to necessarily be enough to put the game in uh, WPI's favor, but under the hands of a more practiced senior team uh, actually could have been a problem, but uh, looks like IIT still is ready to stop dawdling and uh, try to put a close to this game as Ramasami will start his way towards a 15k health baron little bit of a blue ward will be I think placed by what looks like the uh, MF will catch out IIT starting their way towards the Baron you do have that bullet time for the MF that could make a pretty big clear out of it control being put down but Tico just waiting over the edge and she just gets auto to death by as you're not even watching her own helpful but a miracle steal from the Zack beautiful steal is enough to give some life to the uh, Hawks and uh, that's going to be definitely the Swag Turtle pulling out the belt once he watches this game for himself as that is a huge blunder from the Hawks as you have uh, I guess the Emerald Jungler there from WPI trying to do what he can. Weak Side Enjoyer wants to, doesn't care about his KDA anymore and he is mad. He wants to unleash his anger onto Seraphine but IIT even with the minion, uh, Baron buff minions are going to slam their way through that mid in her mid in hip just through brute force. That is a big misplay there from the Hawks. In any other situation, especially if you were like super even, I I just uh, I don't know if it w we'll definitely want to watch that again at the end of this game. I'm not going to bother with the replay at the moment, but I am shocked to think like how you could have missed that. I don't know. Maybe in the interaction, the Ramasami might have been charging an ultimate and, and just like what too focused on trying to get some like the Zack or another player out of the uh, out of the Baron pit because uh, and then and then maybe IIT's damage was just so fast because of the uh, because of the Yasuo or your damage. But uh, that's a that's something you definitely don't want your jungler to miss out on for big objectives and and especially with as big of a gold lead like that that's just you know sloppy sloppy plays unfortunately maybe maybe it was an anti point click stun i don't know i'm really surprised at that but cloud soul here in contention weak side enjoy actually coming all the way around Followed up by Black Blank, so they're just wanting to just stop any chance. Don't just get the Zack completely out of the vision, out of the uh, game, no matter what. We side enjoy is going to be all over the process. Ramasami actually by himself. He tried to ult in there to give the Yasuo time to knock up. Sorry, how coming in here all the way around. Going to be flashing over the wall actually to be able to avoid the bullet time. But this is the clean up here from the Hawks as they are saying, "All right, we're done. Pack it up. We've had enough fun toying with our food, but." Zuriha turning on the big big there for that last play to close it out here for the Hawks. 
A little bit of execution problems there for IIT, but at this point, I don't think that they care too much with under 25 minutes that they will be looking to end this game. Two towers fall in there, and it will be the in-hit fall in 28 to 8, 51.4 to 38.2k gold lead. Well played from the Hawks. All right, I'm taking a look at this Baron. Oh, man. How do you miss that, my, my boy? Okay. TP here even from Ryu, so you've got an insane amount of damage, okay? Tico literally just looking at the Baron because he's not even concerned about his health pool. He's like, okay, I need to try to time this bullet time, and he gets <laughs> straight up knocked up. Okay, so just dies, and then charge here from the Zac. The Poppy's on the front side here. He jumps in for it. Oh my god, why did you channel your ult? Just kill the Baron! Just kill the Baron! Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. I think, I think that's just a lack of comms. That's a lack of focus. And uh, if you were gonna ult, you should have just done it three times sooner, right? I, I mean, IIT didn't have the vision of where the Zac was, so maybe they were just too scared. Like, you, you already had something placed here, so they know it's not, it's not over there. Yeah, and, and during this entire time, they have vision, so they know the Zac's like gotta be somewhere around. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm. Really, that's a really unfortunate play, but I mean, at least the Hawks are able to close it out, so. That's the game, that's the game. Uh, we'll uh, close it here, so. It doesn't look like uh, the stats will be actually able to show um, because I think maybe due to the bug. I'll give you one moment to see if I can get it shown. Yeah, you see, like, we're looking at something blank here right now at the moment. Okay, uh, well, maybe. Yeah, so we'll look at this, but you're looking at the damage here. It is going to be Ryu's taking the top there with the 27k practically there. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, just Annie completely outclassed there in the mid lane. Um, did have a couple moments in terms of getting some nice CC there for uh, to get herself, like, to help out her team a little bit. But you could tell it was just a frustrating matchup for her. Um, and then, uh, it's a surprising kind of 2v2 standoff between MF and Seraphine versus the Jinx Braum. So I think that's just IIT not really respecting the opponents, probably going in for more aggressive plays and, and unfortunately fallen a little bit short there, but nevertheless, IIT builds up their gold lid, slams through just based on pure solo queue instinct. Uh, so that will be... Populating the score. Team one. One over for the Hawks. So, GG's to them as they uh, continue a undefeated streak through their bracket. Um, again, uh, today's Friday stream is due to the uh, a reschedule request, I believe, that IIT was able to accommodate, thankfully. But uh, the next varsity game, I believe, will be Sunday, which we'll try uh, to get some coverage on. So, That'll be all for today, though. Appreciate everyone for stopping by. Sorry for some of the technical difficulties. Seems like I think the pause is what, what led to it. But GG's to the WPI. And thanks for watching, everyone. Elvin Moy, signing off.